Hey guys, Fishmonger here. Um, I recently got a new server power supply for one of my mining rigs. It's the HP BS1200. I forgot the model number. I'll show you it later and everything. It'll probably be down in the description and all that stuff. But um, this is a 1200 watt and 220 volt power supply, and it's like 900, 800 watts at 120 volts. Um, it's a lot nicer than the 650 watt power supply that I currently had. And the main reason is because of the lack of... Um, PCIe uh, outputs on that uh, power supply. It only had like two four pin, uh, I'm sorry, two eight pin, and then the rest were just peripherals. So I really couldn't hook up a lot of my video cards. So um, I went and just bought some of these power supplies and I got some of them common slot adapters and all that stuff and took some pictures to kind of showcase uh, what I did along the way. And that's exactly what this video is. So let's get this party started. <laughs> Well, that was refreshing and new. Hopefully that came out well because I absolutely hate editing videos. It takes way too long and I suck at it. So I hope it was worth it. And just as a side note, the uh, music in the background right now and then the song that I actually used for the uh, intro, the band called The Sword, uh, the album is Low Country. It's a great album that I thoroughly enjoy. So if you like that kind of music or if it's something that you like, you know, hey, check them out. So up on the screen right now, uh, what you're looking at is the actual power supplies that I got and the breakout boards that go along with them. Uh, it's actually the Hewlett Packard uh, DPS-1200FB-1. Um, and as you can see here on the screen, it is saying that it's got an output of 900 watts max. That's at 110 to 112 volts. And then basically it's you know as low as 800 watts when you're at 100 volts, but as high as 1200 watts when you're running like on 220. But the nice thing about these, the Dash 1 model versus the standard one that's out there, which is the non-Dash 1 model, these Dash 1 models are Platinum Plus certified. So they are extremely energy efficient, over 94% conversion, I think at like 50% power load or something like that, which is incredible. One of the things I, I wanted to do, and the reason I was upgrading everything, was because I wanted to save electric. That's one of the big costs in mining, is it costs a lot of money to run all the electric so getting a um, high quality power supply that's really energy efficient of course like a server power supply these things like run forever it was you know really good investment as far as i was concerned the breakout board is probably a standard one you might have seen before it's a common slot uh, breakout board which fits these common slot type hp uh, power supplies it's got 12 ports they're all six pin ports the all the positives are all on the same uh, line or leg. So basically, if I run a continuity test on every single one, they're all the same power. And then same with ground. The ground's all common also. So as far as wiring goes, it's real simple. It's basically every single positive plug on here is essentially all connected to every other positive plug. It's one big parallel board. It does have a connector right here, this four pin connector. You know, a lot of people don't realize that this is actually meant for remote turn-ons. You can take the floppy disk connector that comes on a lot of uh, power supply cords that you get, like that usually have the Molus connectors on them. They come with your power supplies. Plug the floppy disk connector into this. And when you turn on your main power supply, this automatically turns on too. If that's not your cup of tea, you don't want to use that method. There actually is a power button right here. And when you, that guy right there. And when you push that button, basically it turns on and it tells you how many volts it's got. And there's an annoying disco LED that comes on. I have no idea why. It goes red, green, blue, red, green, blue. It literally just cycles like all three over and over again. It's the most annoying thing in the world. I'm probably just going to break it or tape over it. Now, one of the main reasons that I got these power supplies also is because I got these that came in. These incredibly beautiful brown boxes. And the brown boxes actually contained these very beautiful super clocked GTX 1060 from EVGAs. Uh, these are the three gigabyte models. They're not the sixes. But I got them for an incredible deal. They're like $290. So I could not complain about that. In today's price world, that's pretty darn cheap for a SC version of these things. And I have the non super clock version of this. I have like the 6160. These are the 6162s. And I'm going to tell you right now, these are definitely worth it. Not just because of the overclocking potential, but because of the heat sinks that are on them. They're actual really nice huge heavy heat sinks the other one had one of them copper uh heat sinks that just, it was 
pathetic, and it blow the air in every single direction. Um, this one, it actually, the, the heat sinks all run the length of the card, so when you're running in a mining rig and you're blowing the air across all of them, it's much more efficient to relieve heat. Now, in a previous video, I discussed some absolute horrors I had with some riser cables that I bought. Basically, as you can see here, and I could probably zoom in on that. How do I zoom in? This is how I got these, okay? Now, I'm not like a rocket scientist, and I don't have the best vision anymore. However, I can clearly see that there is solder that is totally shorting out uh, five, six, uh, what, six, seven of those uh, junctions on there? Um, it's absolutely horrible. This caused so much of a headache for me when I was using these that I, I literally almost threw my uh, computer across the room just because I was having so much trouble with them. But ever since this incident, um, I do not trust cheap things that you'd find, and I hate to say it from China, but, you know, I hate to break it to you. They, they, they pump out tons and tons of stuff, and a lot of it's just cheap. This is an absolute example of zero quality control. You can tell they didn't electrically test it. They didn't even visually inspect it. Because for me to receive it just like this is blows my mind and basically makes me say to myself, I can't trust anything that I buy in that's either the cheapest thing or made from some brand that I never heard of before um, and then basically run on my expensive rigs where I have thousands of dollars equipment because something catastrophic can happen. Now, being the crafty guy that I was, I was able to fix them and I did get my money back from the vendor. However, I shouldn't have to do stuff like this. And not everybody has a soldering iron and a desoldering station and all that stuff. Um, I do, but you might not. And a lot of people are just going to be SOL if they get junk. So when it comes to connectors and cables, I'm not going to use junk. What I am going to use is quality stuff. So I just bit the bullet and I said, let me just make my own dang cables because I don't trust anything that I'm going to be able to buy in anymore. So I literally went out and bought 500 feet of 16 gauge uh, black cable, 500 feet of 16 gauge red cable. This is quality, um, high strand, uh, 29 strand wire, extremely flexible, 600 volt rated, uh, at least 105 C rated because it's got the PVC thick insulation. You know, I've had issues before where you buy stuff from China, they say it's like 16 or 18 gauge and it's not, like I don't know where they get gauge from. Um, I mean, for instance, did you see those power supplies they sell out now that are 90 plus certified? Like there is no such thing. 80 plus is a actual certification. 90 plus is nothing. They just make it up. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're just saying like, oh, it's 18 gauge and they're measuring the outside insulation, not the actual cables themselves, the copper cables. So I have a source and I know where to get the actual Molex connectors and the pins and I have a soldering iron and I have the proper crimping tool. So I just bit the bullet and I said, let me just go out and buy a whole bunch of these materials so I can just make my own dang power cables. The cables I actually ended up using weren't the red and the black ones that I bought. I had some scrap 16 gauge. Uh, this is actually Teflon insulated uh, green and white. It's just from old spools that I had from years ago. Um, it was sitting around doing nothing. And I knew that I was going to run really short lengths of uh, cord. And I knew that I really wasn't going to be pulling a lot of power with these 1060s. So I said, let me, you know, kill two birds with one stone here. Um, I'll make my own cables. I'll get rid of this scrap cable and I'll go through and build all these things. And they came out really nice. I mean, you can see the with the proper crimp tooling, it's amazing. Uh, the crimps came out really good. And because I'm completely anal when it comes to things like this, not only did I crimp over these connections, but I soldered over them too. Um, this will ensure that there's no problems with the crimps. There's absolutely no way these things are going to pull out. Um, and I have great contact between the pin itself and the cable, which is going to allow maximum current flow. Here you can just see I got the connectors on the ends. Um, they're all tested up. They're all ready to go. So let me start ripping apart my old rig so I can figure out what I'm going to do here. Now, this is a frame I made. I didn't actually make any videos on this, but I decided to make stackable frames. And with this one, it works great. You can see I actually have some fans on the back there. That's the back of it where those fans are with the uh, zip ties. And I've got five cards in there right now that I'm actually going to pull out and put all my 1060s in. Um, but one of the problems I had was that I had nowhere to really put this power supply because I wasn't planning on it when I made this rig. So I took everything out and then basically tried to figure out where the best place for this to be. Here you can see the same exact rig, all the cards out right now, and it's a mismatch or a mi mishmash 
of uh, different kinds of risers. Yeah, 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 I got one of the sadder risers in there, I know that. Um, I actually pulled him out, I got him aside right now. Um, but what I did was I, re I replaced them all with the blue style that you see there, which actually all have the 6-pin connectors. So now I'm able to power everything by 6-pin, which is really nice. I ended up cutting a piece of half inch by 3 inch wide uh, wood, and I slotted it directly in between the two uh, side pieces that I had there. It sits up. Um, it's pretty much this. Actually, it's really close to the same height as the height of the video cards where they sit, but it's a little bit lower because I want to make sure that the fans... You know, blow over the power supply to cool it, but also really maintain all their airflow to the cars. Here you can see a side view of the actual slotted piece of wood that I put in there. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing is basically mounting the server power supply directly on that piece. This is it on that rack. Just a rough idea of where I kind of want to put it. Um, I really did want it in the back. I wanted the fans on it to give it cooling, but I also wanted the, the board and everything to be you know self-contained inside the rig, but also make it so... I have short uh, lengths to travel uh, for the cables, for the power cables, to go actually from that 12-port board directly to the cards themselves. And I wasn't taking any chances with this thing. There actually is four uh, holes on the board themselves for mounting. So I used two of them on the board, and then I drilled a hole through the plastic handle that's on the front side, and I kind of screwed that in too. So this thing is completely secure um, on all ends. I can actually lift the whole rig up if I wanted to and spin it around, and nothing's going to come loose. This is actually a shot that kind of shows what I did where I just literally drilled right through that plastic piece a little bit and just kind of put a screw down in there. And it's enough where it's going to hold it. Um, I mean, the power supply doesn't exactly weigh that much. Um, and it's it's not too much where it's you know, I'm drilling thousands of places. Plus, I give myself a little bit of room to be able to put the power cord in there. So it worked out really well. So basically from here, I just started measuring and cutting cables. And, you know, in this picture, it looks like it's a real tight angle. And I'm really stretching the cord, but it's not. There, there's a good amount of slack in there. I probably have about another inch, inch and a half, which is, yeah, it's cutting it close, but because I'm making this custom for this, I can make the cables as really precisely the length they need to be, which is perfect because the shorter the cable, the better the power delivery. This is just another angle, and it's showing a couple of the other cables and the way they're kind of working in. Um, and really all I did was I worked from the furthest ones out all the way over to the uh, closest ones to fill the ports on the uh, board. This is more or less what the end product looked like. Yeah, I know that it looks like a whole bunch of spaghetti in the back, and the white and the green aren't the prettiest, but I don't care about color, and I have a whole bunch of this cable, so I felt like using it instead of just letting it sit and do absolutely nothing. Different shot. This is a from a top angle down, as you can kind of see, and it worked out really well. There was uh, a little bit of slack in some of the other ones because towards the end, I just said, you know what, the, the cables are so, so short, I mean, I was around a foot, a foot with the cables, that I might as well just cut them all the same length, that way I can mix, you don't have to worry about mixing and matching the, the wires when I'm putting it together, and I could just make all the same cable length, and there is a couple that are actually like four or five inches towards the bottom there, um, and I, I only use, because I have five cards in this rig, I only use ten slots on the power supply, so I do have two spots left over, in the event that I need to power uh, another card in my, my other rig, which actually sits on top, I do have that ability. Different shot, uh, power supply mounted with the board, all the cables in. And you can see it's actually fairly neat as far as, you know, as my, I'm concerned. Uh, the fans have really good airflow over all the cards, and the power supply fits in there really well. It, it sits nice, so I, I, I kind of like this frame. It's not as small as some of my other frames. But it works well, and it's got enough length in there where if I wanted to put some longer cards, I did allow some room for that. This is a view of the final assembly with everything set up the way it is. And I've got the, you can see the power supply there and the fans. And then this is from the back looking forward. So those fans basically blow forward over all those cards. And it came out, came out pretty well. I, I was impressed with it. Uh, the power supply has been working well, too. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool to the touch. Certainly nowhere near as hot as the other power supply, and I'll show you this. So I have these two rigs, right? The one on the bottom is the 1060 rig that I was just showing you in all the other pictures. And the one on the top is basically identical as far as the motherboard goes, the processor, and the CPU power supplies. They're both those 650-watt uh, Corsair power supplies. Are they Corsairs? I think they're Corsairs. And just the, the amount of power draw on the bottom... Right now, the bottom one... That power supply is only powering the motherboard, the CPU, and the hard drive. So basically, it's got very little load on it. Uh, the top one is actually powering the motherboard, the power supply, 
the hard drive, and then those four cards. So I did a temperature test. While the top power supply is actually spitting out heat that's close to 95, 96 degrees Fahrenheit, the bottom power supply is a lot more efficient and only kicking out about 82.6. So it's a good amount cooler. Just from the feel in the front, it feels a lot cooler. And the fans on these power supplies are strong. So the fact that it's blowing out and it's it's much, much cooler air is really helping in here. Now, the interesting thing is I actually checked the temperature on the server power supply in the back. And I have my thermal couple right now pretty much inside the hole uh, on the, the exhaust on that power supply. Uh, the, the server power supply. It's in as far as I can safely put it without short circuiting it anything. And it's a cool 75.6 degrees on the inside of that thing. These are very efficient power supplies. It's not even breaking a sweat, like I said before. It's, it's barely getting warm, and it is really, really cool. Now, granted, I do have the fans on the back that are basically blowing over the whole thing, but the power supply itself, the server power supply, is laying sideways. It is actually sucking the air in from the side and then blowing it out. So while the fans do help cool the frame of the power supply, they're not actually adding any airflow to the inside of the power supply itself. So this cool temperature here is really just the efficiency of the power supply. And then these are just a couple other pictures of the uh, the two rigs that I've got right now. Basically one of the frames uh, is the, the top frame right there is actually the second frame I made. Uh, the bottom one is the third frame I made. Um, and they sit on top of each other nicely. Uh, I really should put some kind of plate or something here on the side to make it so it won't slide off the side but really the thing weighs so much and I don't bump it or anything it's not going to go anywhere so when it comes to these power supplies I'm definitely going to say that I recommend them there if you if you need additional power and you don't feel like spending money on another computer power supply that's going to have ports that you won't need like another 24 pin uh, port for the power a motherboard or all those peripheral ports which only which put out the 3 volt the 5 volt and the 12 volt um, I recommend actually using one of these they're not as complicated or or anything to use I literally bought the board you know verified that it worked with it plugged it in got all my cables made them up plugged them in and then wired it up powered it up and screwed and boom it just worked I mean that was pretty much it um, I, I was expecting it to be a lot more complicated but it really wasn't and now to plug a couple things I did buy a bunch of these so I have more than one and I'm probably only gonna use one which means that I'm gonna sell my other ones so if anybody's interested in these power supplies I have extra power supplies I have extra breakout boards and I can custom make any length cable that you need for six pin PCIe I can use it I can make them with quality 16 gauge uh, pure copper stranded cables I can make them with oh I even have where is it I even bought this uh, plastic loom. It's like a quarter inch wide loom that actually slides over and fits over all the cables. So I can make the cables look nice and neat with the loom and the zip ties on the ends and all that stuff. Um, it, so if you are in the market for uh, power supplies or you want a breakout board or cables or all three, um, I, I got some to sell. S send me an email, wowfishmongeryahoo.com. Send me a message in this, this video. Um, I will accept payment via crypto. So that's a plus for you. You want to pay me in Bitcoin. You want to pay me in Zcash. You want to pay me in Litecoin. Um, I'm good with everything. I pretty much got wallets for it all. So it's good, good way to make a transaction. Uh, and, you know, uh, I, can, I can help you out. You can help me out. And we're all going to be good. So one of the things I plan on doing in my next video is I'm going to be taking a look at some uh, different pools and be doing some comparisons. Um, lately, I've been doing a lot of mining pool hub. And I'm playing around with that. And I've also been using Nano Pool. I've also been using Fly Pool. I've been using uh, NiceHash. And, you know, they all have their ups and downs. So I've been doing testing for a while now, probably about a month. I got about a month of data that I've been collecting. And to be honest, I don't know what I can draw any conclusions from this because it's pretty much all over the place. But um, I'm going to collect a little bit more data, especially on Mining Pool Hub. And I'm going to make a video on it because I want to show it to you guys. Maybe it'll help you out as far as choosing what pool you want to use. So expect that uh, coming up pretty soon. Anyway, this is Fishmonger. I'm going to be calling it a day. I will catch you later.